Hey boys and girls, today I'll be reading a book to you by Eric Carle. It's called The Grouchy Ladybug. Just kidding, I can't stay grouchy for too long. So let's think about Eric Carle. Last video you learned how he made his art. He painted pieces of paper, let it dry, then cut it out and made collages with it. So keep that in mind as you are reading this book with me. Also, in a lot of his books, not all of his books, but a lot of his books, he likes to add something in that's just a little bit extra. So I wonder if that will happen in this book today. The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carl. When I open up the front cover, this is what I see. And you can definitely tell that is paint for sure. Here's the title page, The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carl. But over here, there's an interesting bit of information. Let me read it to you. It says, aphids are very small insects. They suck the juice from leaves and then the leaves die. Ladybugs eat aphids. That's good for trees, shrubs, and other plants that have leaves. To the ladybugs, I have dedicated this book. Three cheers for them. So this is the dedication page. Dr. Er, sorry, not Dr. Seuss, Eric Carl made this book for ladybugs. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. A friendly ladybug flew from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then, a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It too saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Good morning, said the friendly ladybug. Go away, shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. No, they're all mine, all mine, screamed the grouchy ladybug. Or do you want to fight me for them? If you insist, answered the friendly ladybug sweetly. It looked the other bug straight in the eye. The grouchy ladybug stepped back. It looked less sure of itself. Oh, you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. Then why don't you pick on somebody bigger? I'll do that, screeched the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and flew off. Now here's where the pages get kind of cool. At six o'clock, it met a yellow jacket. Hey you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At seven o'clock, it met a stag beetle. Hey you, said the grouchy ladybug, Want to fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At eight o'clock, it came across a praying mantis. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the praying mantis, reaching out with its long front legs. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug. and flew off. At 10, there you go, 10 o'clock, it saw a lobster. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the lobster, stretching its claws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug. And flew off. At 11 o'clock, it bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough, said the ladybug, and flew off. At 12 noon, it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the snake, right after lunch. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the gorilla, beating its chest. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? 
if you insist. So the rhinoceros lowering its horn. Oh, you're not big enough, so the grouchy ladybug and flew off. My goodness, this is a grouchy ladybug. At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? But the whale did not answer at all. You're not big enough anyway, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off. At 5.15, the grouchy ladybug said to one of the whale's flippers, Hey you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's fin, Hey you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, Hey you, want to fight? And the whale's tail gave the grouchy ladybug such a slap that it flew across the sea and across the land. At six o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived back to where it had started from. Ah, here you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be hungry. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Oh, thank you said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. You're welcome. Soon all the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You are welcome, answered both ladybugs, and they went to sleep. The fireflies who had been sleeping all day came out to dance around the moon. The end. Oh, and one more thing right there at the end. That says Eric Carl. That is his signature. Let's talk characters. There was a main character in this story. The main character is the one that the story is mostly about, the grouchy ladybug. There were other characters too, like the friendly ladybug, the whale, the rhinoceros, all of those other animals. Why do you think Eric Carl made this book? Remember, he wanted to make things that were fun for kids to learn and fascinating, right? Um, was there anything in this book that you learned or maybe that someone else could learn? I know one thing that you could learn from this book. You could practice telling time. Down here at the bottom, it said what time it was, like at six o'clock. And there would be a picture of a clock showing six o'clock. It tells you the time and then you can match it to all of these clocks here. I think another thing that you could learn from this book is what each of these animals uses to defend itself. So, like, it says that the yellow jacket was showing its stinger. It says that the stag beetle was opening its strong jaws. Um, it said that the praying mantis reached out with its long front legs. So it's showing what and telling you what all of these animals use to defend itself from maybe a predator. Think about that grouchy ladybug at the end of the book. Would you call the ladybug grouchy at the end? Did you notice that at the end... He was a lot more polite, a lot more pleasant. I wonder why, what do you think? At what point did the grouchy ladybug not become grouchy anymore? Let's go back. So the last time it said that the ladybug was grouchy, I would say it was right about here when it asked the whale's tail for a fight. But then what happened? The tail flicked the ladybug and sent it flying across town. And then when the ladybug landed, he wasn't so grouchy anymore. I think the ladybug finally realized he didn't need to be so grouchy. I don't know why he was grouchy in the beginning. He was greeted very friendly. Good morning. And he said, he was just didn't want to share, did he? And then when this nice ladybug said, okay, I guess if you want to fight, we can. And looked at the grouchy ladybug, the grouchy ladybug started to back away. I don't know if he was actually that tough. I think that grouchy ladybug was actually a little bit nervous when he saw the things like the yellow jacket stinger or the lobster's claws and said, no, you're not big enough and flew away to pretend to find 
a new one to pretend he was super tough. But when he finally found the biggest animal and asked it to fight, all that whale did was flick its tail and sent the ladybug flying across town. I wonder if that ladybug learned anything from all of this. I hope so. I hope the ladybug learned not to be so grouchy and not to walk around and start fights. That ended up being very dangerous for him. I hope you can remember some of the ideas in this book and maybe try to, avo to avoid being grouchy today as much as you can be. All right, boys and girls, thank you. I'll see you later.